Out front tonight, Putin's assassin demand. We are learning tonight that Putin refused to release American Paul Whelan along with Brittany Griner unless Victor Boot was returned in addition to a convicted assassin and former Russian spy. This news coming as we're hearing new details about Griner's nearly 10 months in prison tonight. She landed in Texas today, and tonight we're learning her forced labor consisted of helping make uniforms, along with other key details of her imprisonment. But we still don't know tonight what condition Paul Whelan is in because Putin is refusing to release him unless he gets this assassin back. You're looking at him. His name is Vadim Krasikov, and he's currently serving a life sentence in Germany for killing someone three years ago, execution style, in broad daylight in a park. Krasikov executed his target using a silencer, approaching him from behind, shooting him twice in the body, and then shooting him in the back of the head as he lay on the ground. It was a hit the German court found was ordered by the Russian government itself. Now, I'm gonna be speaking with Paul Whelan's sister in a few moments. Because as Whelan is still suffering in a Russian penal colony tonight, there are celebrations in Russia, celebrations for Victor Boot's triumphant return. Boot freed from American prison where he was serving 25 years for his work as the most prolific arms dealer in history and for plotting to kill Americans. Russian newspapers displaying a big smiling picture of Boot across the front pages. The headline on this paper, for example, reading, Boot is happy. How the Russian businessman, that's what they call him, managed to return from prison in the U.S. Now, Boot also went on Russia Today. It's a Russian state media program, and he did it right away. And he took this swipe at the United States, making it clear he is now focused on Ukraine. The West believes that they did not finish us off in 1990 when the Soviet Union began to collapse. This is a point that Putin himself makes repeatedly. The point is that the West is now using Ukraine as a way to destroy Russia itself. Boot and Putin seem to share a worldview, and Boot now owes Putin his freedom, and Putin may be ready to ask for payback. And here's what the woman who was credited by the Secretary General of the UN for Boot's arrest told me yesterday that payback could be. Putin is going to be ready to deploy Victor Boot. He comes with years of experience, years of contacts. He started in Ukraine. And I think that's one of the areas we have to be concerned about right away. Victor Boot will be a major asset for Putin. A major asset for Putin. And a major asset is what Putin desperately needs right now. Let me play for you this surprising and notable exchange today between a reporter and Putin. And I say surprising because what you're going to hear here is that the reporter references the deluge of social media posts and leaked phone conversations we've been playing for you, where Russian soldiers slammed their equipment, their training, and their commanders. Recently, there have been conflicting reports about the supply of the army. You said that the problems are being solved or they have already been solved. But nevertheless, the flow of messages from the fighters from the front lines does not stop. Appeals go to the military commissars, to volunteers. They ask not only for uniforms, but also for medicine, because consumables run out very quickly. And the question is, who to believe, Department of Defense reports or the frontline soldiers? You can't trust anyone. Only I can be trusted. Don't trust the soldiers on the front lines. Don't trust the military. Only I can be trusted. He says it with a smirk, the words of a dictator who sees only one path out of Ukraine, victory. In fact, tonight, Putin said he's considering formally altering the military doctrine of Russia to allow for Russia to strike first, to launch a preemptive nuclear strike against a foreign power. Kylie Atwood begins our coverage out front tonight in Washington. And Kylie, Putin tonight saying the door is open for another prisoner exchange. Uh, perhaps referencing that assassin we're talking about, saying they want Krasikov back. What is the likelihood this happens? Well, listen, we know that U.S. officials have already received that request from Russians a number of times, and they have simply said it's not something they can deliver on. It's not something that Germany is willing to do. But the last few months are going to greatly inform 
what the following months, the months to come, look like. Because U.S. officials know the types of things that they could offer Russia that they're not going to accept. Uh, some of the names that we know that U.S. officials floated in an effort to get home Paul Whelan with Brittany Griner include Alexander Vinnick. He is a Russian who was expatriated to the United States just in August. And he is facing uh, charges of money laundering and extortion, uh, just among a few. And then there is another Russian, Alex excuse me, Roman Selesnev. Um, he is someone who has been involved in cyber criminals. He's facing a 14-year prison sentence serving that in the United States right now. That's not to say that those names won't come up again, but they're not going to be posed to the Russians in the same form that they have in the past. I spoke with a senior administration official who explained that the Biden administration realizes that they need to put forward some new ideas here, and that's what they're thinking about right now. They're trying to figure out a way forward, trying to figure out something that Russia will accept. Now, hmm. as you noted out of the gates there, Aaron, President Putin did say today that it is possible there could be another prisoner swap. On the face of it, that sounds great, but we heard uh, just in recent hours from the Deputy National Security Advisor, John Finer, who expressed some caution, saying you can't take everything that President Putin says for face value, but the U.S. is committed to trying to get Paul Whelan home. Aaron? Certainly, certainly true with that, that comment. All right, thank you so much, Kylie Atwood, uh, with all those details from Washington. I want to go now to Paul Whelan's sister, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, I'm glad to speak to you again. Um, you know, obviously, I would, would have hoped it would have been in, in different circumstances with, with celebration for your family, but you are still waiting tonight. Do you, when, when you hear these details that, 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 that Putin may, may do another exchange, that he desperately wants Vadim Krasikov, that he had tried to, to, to engineer that swap, possibly, do you think that makes sense? Should Krasikov be handed over in exchange for your brother? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, ever since uh, BG's release yesterday, uh, members of Congress and pundits and the media have been weighing in with hot takes about about Boot, about Brittany, about uh, about this guy, <laughs> this assassin, yeah. uh, and about um, about my brother. And it's been very difficult for my family to hear. My brother uh, discussed as if his only value was what we would have to give up for him. That's, you know, look, it's a poignant thing to say. Um, I guess on a certain level, from a policy perspective, it it does boil down to that. I mean, has your family had any conversations with, with the government about this, about what they are willing to do to bring him home? Uh, I think we've made it pretty clear that as far as I'm concerned, at least, uh, my brother is worth more, has a greater value than any Russian criminal. So are they responsive to that? Do they, do they understand where you're coming from? Do they, do they internalize it in a meaningful way? Well, I have tried uh, not to discuss Putin's gift registry, <laughs> but so much. I'm not going to carry uh, the water for the Russians. If they've got a, an argument to make about something that they want, they need to make it um, through the diplomatic channels. Uh, and I expect that now BG is back, that the teams that have been working to help get Paul home uh, over the last months and years are going to hit the ground running, trying to figure out a new way to solve this problem. And do you think that the U.S. learned anything? And you talk about BG, of course, Brittany Griner. Has the U.S. learned anything from what's happened here, from the fact that they were able to secure her release, uh, you know, in exchange for, for a notorious arms dealer, Victor Boot? Anything that could help with securing Paul's release? I certainly hope so, because Paul has been waiting for a very long time. Uh, you know, he, he sat through the previous administration and now this one, uh, watching other people go home. I can't imagine what his life is like day to day uh, in the prison, the resolve that he is showing. But how long will that resolve uh, last? And I'm hoping that uh, people are feeling a greater sense of urgency to solve this problem and get him home. Elizabeth, I'm curious if whether in your conversations with the, the U.S. government, have they ever talked to you about why they think it has been harder to secure his release? You know, why others? You point out he's well, been there so much yeah. longer than so many others, right? And, they, and others come and others go mm -hmm. and swaps happen and yet not him. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, really, from the start, the FSB set Paul up. Um, they gave him a USB drive uh, and then arrested him five minutes later, saying that the USB drive contained state secrets. And from that point on, they uh, held him for 18 months uh, at Lafortevo Prison in pretrial detention, then had a sham trial and sent him, sentenced him to 16 years for this, uh, quote unquote, espionage. And so ever since then, they have this is a Russian fairy tale, uh, and they have decided that because um, of this this quote-unquote value Paul has, that they should be able to ask for something big in return. And do you have any more or less hope tonight, Elizabeth, after the Griner swap, that, that Paul will be home soon? And I use that word soon. I know it's in, it, it, undefinable, but do you have more hope or less hope tonight? Uh, it really hasn't changed um, it, to a certain extent because Trevor and Paul, uh, Trevor and uh, Brittany's situations were treated differently. Um, that still left the the situation with Paul, and how was that going to get resolved? Um, I do know that I will be bearing down um, much more with much more pressure uh, on the people I've been working with because I don't want to see this happen again.